this week's feast. Deckard's curry from Bee and Puppycat. What's up, everybody? Hi. We are back at it again with another Bee and Puppycat episode. That's right. We are really excited about this recipe. It's really, really cute, everyone. It's amazing how they fold the little egg in the show and he pours the curry around. Now, we're gonna do our best to recreate what that curry is in real life, but more importantly, we're making curry. I love curry yes. and rice. Ugh. It's gonna be so good. And mm. this is just one of those recipes that make you really excited. Just, you love the way it looks in the cartoon. Yeah. So I don't know about you guys, but that really motivates us to like come up with something really cool. And the nice thing about it is that whenever they make food on shows and they really show you how it's done and the way they fold it together, it makes it really do feel like you could do it in real life too. This isn't a fictional recipe in the way that like curry is just curry, but it is fictional that we got a cute little puppy cat on top. Without further ado, let's cook some curry. It's always a joy to return to Bee and Puppy Cat. And in this episode, we see Deckard making one of the cutest curries this world's ever seen. We get lots of hints about this dish with the animation. So today we get to have an extra accurate recipe to what we see on screen. Let's get started by taking a look at the cute decorations Deckard puts on his puppy cat. Since our curry will have carrots in it, let's get the most out of them by also using them to be puppy cat's collar by pickling them and adding some natural coloring. Slice a large carrot into medallions and add to a small mason jar. Add garlic and pepper to the top and set aside. Our pickling liquid is a simple combination of vinegar, beet juice, and sugar in a pot, stirring and bringing to a boil. Remove from the heat and pour it into the mason jar. Seal it and let it rest for at least an hour. If you can leave it overnight, then even better. While that's going, let's get on with preparing the curry. Now, the beef chuck is actually very optional if you want to make this a vegetarian dish instead, but if you do decide to beef it up, then season with some salt and pepper and bring it to the stove. Add oil to a large stock pot and your meat, cooking it in a single layer across the bottom and then flipping it over to color the other side. It doesn't need to be all the way cooked through because we're going to be adding it to the curry later. Transfer it to a plate. Now curries are all about the mashup of tons of flavors, so don't clean the pot. Use the same one and melt some butter inside. This is a great makeshift roux with no added flour. Cook chopped up onions and carrots, let them simmer for a bit, then add in garlic, ginger, and all of our curry spices. Cinnamon, turmeric, cumin, coriander, ground cloves, cardamom, and cayenne powder. We added some minced red chili for a spicy kick and a couple of bay leaves as well. Stir and let the spices mingle with the vegetables for six to eight minutes. Now that our veggies are nice and softened, add in roughly chopped garlic, diced tomatoes, broth, and potatoes to the pot. Reduce to a simmer, cover, and let cook for at least 30 minutes. You should also start cooking a cup of rice at this point, ideally in a rice cooker so you don't need to tend to it. The piece de resistance of Deckard's curry is clearly puppy cat in his egg omelet blanket. Making a circular omelet is a bit harder than it seems, so start with beating two eggs till it's completely the same consistency. Add oil and butter to a pan and spread evenly throughout on medium-high heat. Pour in your beaten eggs to the pan, and here's the trick. You need to agitate the eggs a little bit to make sure it all cooks evenly and throughout, and we can fold it later. So shake it a little bit, pull it with a fork, and make sure to always swirl the pan around until the open spots are covered and refilled. Once that's done, lay it out on wax or butcher paper. With your cooked rice, wet your hands a bit and start forming your cutest puppy cat. Now, unfortunately, this thing won't actually wrap up and work if it's puppy cat as he looks, so when you're done having fun molding it, just keep the head shape and wrap the rest of the omelet around the rice. Pour your curry mixture into a round bowl with a lip and carefully lay your puppy cat and egg omelet on top. Add a little more rice so that the hands are peeking over the edge. We used a canned sour plum for his bell and then sliced our pickled carrots to size to dress his collar. Finally, you can use ketchup or sriracha to pipe out puppy cat's adorably angry little face onto the rice that's peeking out from the omelet. We also cut up some of our uncooked carrots into the shapes that we see on the show to dress the sides, and voila! Deckard's Curry from Bee and Puppy Cat. It's not a well-known recipe, but it's one that really sparks the imagination because it's just so darn cute. Curries are a food that I'm happy to eat any time of year. And if you're not feeling artsy with your food, just add rice to the curry recipe and you've got a super filling and hearty meal. It's easy to make a lot of curry, so make sure your friends are well-fed the next time you're in the kitchen. Happy eating! Look at it! <gasps>
Well, you can't see it from there, but you just saw it a second ago when we did the product How reveal. Was it? Oh my gosh, Ash, oh, you did such a good job uh, painting on like the little ketchup marks too. Well, thank you. You did such a good job shaping the rice and making the omelet. Well, you know, I just had to look in the mirror and I had everything in front of me. Oh, just a little <laughs> teamwork. All right, let's dig in. This is I'm a gonna great self-portrait. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm gonna get a little egg. I'm gonna get an arm in there. Oh, an and egg a pickled and some carrot. rice. Ooh, yes. Charles. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That is some good curry. Ooh, wow. it's got a little kick to it, too. I like that. I'm gonna get some with some egg this time. Mm hmm You know, I, I love curry. It's such a versatile and universal dish. So many different cultures have their own version of it, and it's one of those things that reminds me of, like, soup for comfort when you're at home, or, like, your favorite thing that your mom makes. It's warm, it fills you up, it keeps you super full. Mm, it's great. Well, that's why it's the perfect recipe for fall. Mm-hmm. This is amazing, y'all. This is really good. I've been waiting to eat something like this for a long time, and I'm so glad that I didn't have to go to some restaurant to do it. In fact, it was super easy to make at home, and you can do that too. Just cook it up, gobble it down, and you know, even if you can't make a little puppy cat on top, you still have a grade A quality recipe for curry and rice here, and maybe a little bit of egg too. And so you can serve this anytime, anywhere, and people will love it, and they'll love you. Especially great if idea. Ooh, the little spice in here is, ooh. It's making me sweat. And really, you could like spice it up as much as you want. A little mm -hmm. bit less, a little bit more. It's to your taste buds, my friend. That's what's so beautiful about this recipe as well. And cooking in general. It's very flexible, and obviously the creators of the show, you know, they put what you would expect to be in a curry in there. Some meat, potatoes, carrots, onions. Yep. And that's just the thing. You can do whatever you want with this yeah. curry. If, you, if you're like, I love X, I want celery in here, go for it. Ooh, Why not? that sounds like it would be a great addition. Mm -hmm. And it, we had fun uh, dissecting this for you guys, you know? So our interpretation is this. Yours may vary a little bit, but that's the beauty of different minds and different bodies in the it's kitchen. That's very true, that's very true. And different cats, or puppy cats Right, in different puppy cats in the kitchen. These recipes are a great base for whatever you want to do with them. Otherwise, just make ours. Who cares, you know? Do something fun. Two thumbs up for you guys. Two thumbs up. We made a curry without a roux, which is also not an easy thing to do. Mm. And packed with flavor and spices and Very mm. good. It just zings ya. Yep, the moment. It just bop, 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 beep, boop. Beep, boop, bop, bop, beep, bop. <sighs> <laughs> I sweat when I eat spicy food, and I'm also sweating because I have this hood on right now. Yeah, so I, you are I, The camera sweating. can't tell, but maybe it can if you zoom in a little bit. You can see it right here in my nosy nose. But yes, boy, oh you got boy. the droplets. The droplets are on the way, but this puppy cat couldn't be happier because we got some delicious curry to eat. Yeah, and he, he likes spicy things, though. Yeah, I do. So it's like tickling your taste buds a little bit, but it's a like bit, spicy. It's like a, a calculated risk, right? See, just another fun part of what cooking is all about. Yes. Which is taking these crazy ingredients, slamming them together, and making something that before didn't exist, yep. but now does. You're always learning something. That's why we like to consider Feast of Fiction an educational show. This is a teaching cooking show. Yes. I mean, I'm not doing these voiceovers to tell you how not to do it. It's for the kids. Yeah, unless it's the Everything Burrito. Don't make that recipe or ever watch that episode. That's a throwback. That was something else. That was so many years ago. This show has been around for a long time, and now we are on a brand new set, in big part thanks to our patrons at patreon.com slash Feast of Fiction. They have contributed so much to us and are a part of our vibrant community. I talk to them every day on Discord. We share memes and jokes. And it's because of them that we were able to make a new set, really upgrade what we're doing here in the kitchen. And next year, oh ho ho, we have so much cool stuff coming out next year. We really do. We're gonna have a cookbook. We're yep. gonna have Mulan. Yes, we <laughs> we're gonna are. have a whole lot of stuff. But yes. it's gonna be great. We can't wait for the yeah. growth. And we can't wait to share that growth and, yep. and discovery and journey with you all back so home. So thank you guys all for being a part of our journey and being a part of the success. And don't be afraid to leave a comment below and let us know what you wanna see us make next on the show because we have a huge list compiled from all of your comments. And the more thumbs up you give something, the more attention we pay to it. That's true. And so be sure to follow us on all the social medias. <laughs> We'd love to know what you're doing and how you are integrating Feast of Fiction into your own lives. So mm -hmm. thank you for all the shares and the comments and everything else. And on Instagram, Feast of Fiction is just a fun page. There's so many cute little food things yeah. that we find and we post up there. It's bright, yeah. it's colorful. It's just a fun place to hang out. Yeah. It's one of those feeds that you never mind seeing when they pop up. It's not like, ugh, another selfie. It's like, no. We got some cool food pics. We got some Pokemon themed stuff. Maybe it's a Totoro rice ball. Who knows? The only way you can find out is following us on social media. Yep. All right. So we'll see y'all on Instagram and <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Bye bye.